Good morning, everyone. I'm going to call the meeting to order. My name is Scott Corbett, Chair of the Ohio Rail Development Commission. We'll call the uh, meeting to order now. Uh, we have members from the public participating online using GoToMeeting. I'd like to thank Mike Fitch from ODOT's Local Technical Assistance Program, who is assisting us today with GoToMeeting. Mike, could you please give everyone an online an overview of what to expect? Thank you, Chairman Corbett, and good morning, everyone. Please note that this meeting is being recorded, and all comments are a matter of public record. As you already know, all attendees in the GoToWebinar platform are muted, but participants will have an opportunity to speak following the presentations. Please refer to the GoToWebinar panel on the right side of your computer screen. You're most likely listening to us using your computer speaker system by default. If you experience any audio issues and would like to join by phone instead, please click on the arrow symbol next to the word audio to expand the audio section and then select phone call. The dial-in information will then be displayed. You are welcome to submit questions at any time by typing them into the questions box of the GoToWebinar panel. After the presentations have concluded, there will be time for public comments and discussion. You may proceed by using the questions box, or you may click on the hand icon to raise your hand. Each person will be unmuted when it's their turn to speak. If you are joining by phone only or would like to provide input following the meeting, please email your questions or comments to Wendy Jordan at wendy.jordan at dot.ohio.gov. With that, we will turn things back to Chairman Corbin. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Megan, would you please take the roll? Mr. Reveal? Here. Commissioner Jerry Roberts? Here. Commissioner Jackson? Present. Mr. Lefty? Here. Mr. Lozier? Here. Director Mike Banks? Present. Mr. Ryan? Just here. Commissioner Richter? Here. Commissioner Schneider? Chairman Corbett? Present. Representative Graham? Representative Coops? Senator Kinsey? Senator Sykes? Here. Mr. Chairman, we have nine voting members. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Senator Sykes, welcome today to the commission. Thanks for coming. Appreciate it. Uh, do we have a motion to approve the September meeting minutes? Commissioner Beal, second. Second. Second by Commissioner Ryan. Any discussion? Megan, would you please take the roll? Commissioner Jerry Roberts? Yes. Commissioner Jackson? Yes. Commissioner Lindsay? Yes. Commissioner Lozier? Yes. Director Marshall? Yes. Commissioner Ryan? Yes. Staff reports. Matt, please give your director's report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, commissioners, my staff report can be found on page 8. Uh, it is a little bit more lengthy because we have a lot more going on, uh, which is a good thing, thanks to uh, uh, the Governor and the General Assembly. A uh, couple of things going on. So the Great Cross Elimination Program uh, was open for applications on September 5th. Uh, as of October 31, we received 19 applications. I think that number is closer to 25, 24, 25. So it is very active. Um, it is exactly as we expected. There's some that I think we're going to be ready to go for a federal application. Um, there's a couple that are very good safety projects that will probably be advancing with, with state money. And most of them are going to require some planning efforts to uh, move forward to get them ready for a federal application. We are uh, going through the ODOT programmatic. Uh, I think Megan just filed it for a $5 million consulting contract um, so that, the, that those projects that need the planning effort, that do not have the local resources or are not qualified to handle federal funding, uh, that we would do that 
through ORDC slash ODOT media districts uh, to get those ready. Um, so that, that is moving forward. Uh, the orphan, uh, another, another priority that came out of the budget through the General Assembly was the Orphan Crossing Program, or the Orphan Rail Program. We will uh, have that go live Monday. Uh, I'm looking at Tim and Sarah, and am I saying that correctly? Yes. <laughs> uh, that is going to be a separate application. That is one-time money, a million dollars for uh, addressing uh, Orphan Rail issues, Orphan Crossing issues. So that will be open to everybody. It will be a broad, uh, a broad eligibility for that. The one thing that will be required, and this follows with how we do all of our other grants, any grantee will then be responsible for maintaining that asset moving forward once, once the improvements are made, whatever they are. So if that is removing a siding from a street because the facility is no longer receiving rail, uh, that's, that's one example that we were given as an orphan crossing, then the local highway authority would be responsible for maintaining that, that section in between. Uh, or if there's other crossing issues, if it's rail or whatever. But the applicant, at the end of the day, the applicant would be responsible for maintaining it moving forward. Uh, uh, I wanted to point out, and you'll see this more in uh, Secretary Treasurer McClory's budget, but the, the, the scope and nature of the rail project coming before the commission has already changed because of the greater amount of TRF that we've been provided. So if, if, you look at, if you look at the amount of funding that we've spent to date, that actually exceeds our budget last year already. So um, I, again, just, just a thank you to the General Assembly members here, uh, the DeWine administration. Uh, it, this has been, it, you know, I, I like to put it, it might, be, it might seem a little glib, but you know, this funding has allowed us to take care of this long-term issues. We're not, we're, not just, we're not just repairing things, we're fixing them. And I think the Wheeling Bridge was an example of that. Our old budget, we gave the money to make a structural fix. We got the new budget, they came back to us, we could replace the structure. And so those are the type, that, that order of magnitude of what we can get accomplished is, is just, uh, it, 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 the, the budgets and the projects don't express what we can do. We can, we can all take care of these long-term issues. Um, so it, it's, it's really rewarding for, for my part, and, and everyone involved has my thanks. Um, Switching gears a bit on the passenger rail side, up front, we are still waiting for the uh, for the FRA to announce their corridor identification program. Uh, if you recall, there were two applications submitted by us on behalf of the state of Ohio. It was the Cleveland Toledo Detroit corridor and the Cleveland Columbus Dayton Cincinnati corridor or the three CMD corridor. I know that uh, the Mid Ohio Regional Planning Commission was involved in the corridor going to Chicago working. With with their counterparts in, in Indiana and, and uh, the North Milwaukee, Northern Ohio Area Coordinating Agency. Thank you, thank you, Darren. Um, they submitted one from Cleveland too. But, hey, I've been in government for a long time, but even I can't get all the acronyms right. It's from Cleveland to Chicago. So um, we, we are all waiting anxiously to find out where the offer is going to arrive on that. Uh, in addition, the Rail Commission continues to work with the Federal Railroad Administration and Amtrak on, an, on, on their effort called the South of the Lake Study that is just east of Chicago. Anyone who has any experience with the freight railroad network or the passenger rail network realizes that there are huge bottlenecks east of Chicago currently. Um, one of the advocating points that we've been making is, um, while everybody has a lot of plans about what they'd like to do, no one really has a good understanding of what kind of capital improvements are needed to make the rail network fluid through there right now. Um, it impacts long-term trains, or the long-distance trains that, that Ohio currently has. It also has a, a big impact on our intermodal networks, and which affect the customers in Ohio, which is So we continue, we continue with that. Uh, you can see the growing list of, of uh, the status of our federal administration grants. Uh, we continue to work with that. Um, uh, the, the new add-on is the Fostoria Grade Separation Project. We're working with District 2. And, you know, shout out to Casey Young, who's helping us with that, and Lori Duke in Central Office, as we try to develop these on-ramps between the federal grant process and, and the project development process that we normally use. Um, wanna, just want to highlight a couple other things, I apologize. Uh, the Rail Commission staff attended the, uh, the Ashto Council on Rail meeting. Uh, there was a lot of discussion and concern among the states about project delivery timelines, especially uh, kind of scalability both at the state and federal levels. 
um, and mixing of federal funds. That's been a big concern. Most of the time these programs are set up that FHWA has, a, has their own project development process, FRA has their own project development process, but when you get into things like rate separations, we're mixing FHWA funding and FRA funding. And so it's one NEPA law that slightly nuanced in terms of, of their processes. And so that was a big point of discussion. It's a bit in the weeds, but it, it is, you know, everybody wants to be multimodal, but being, wanting to be multimodal and actually truly being multimodal are, are, are two different things that we're funding now. So it's, it's, it's complicating factors, and that's where things like, oh, we're working with Casey Young on that district too, trying to figure, figure out where those connection points are. Another big concern of, our, of, us, of ours that was mentioned is uh, FRA is announcing that the next round of Chrissy funding, which is where we get a lot of our federal funding, they're doubling up on that. So uh, it used to be in the 350 to $400 million range. The last round was a billion dollars. This next round, they're talking about a potential $2.8 billion application round. Um, quite honestly, we've talked to the Ohio Rail Association. Um, there, uh, there's not the capacity in Ohio for us to truly compete for that level of funding. Um, so we're really uh, discouraged and, and we're hopeful that the FRA changes their mind and about that combined funding. Um, let's see here. I think that's, that's, the, uh, that, that's the, the crux of my application, or uh, my, my report. Um, I did want to point out a couple of different things. Um, this had been brought up under public comment, uh, Village of Plymouth Bridge, that was a railroad bridge. Um, that was funded uh, by ODAC under their municipal bridge program. So we, we, we are helping them with the design because they're closing crossings. So that was a big, a big win in the way we can combine the, the various funding sources. So we're really pr happy about that. Um, and then um, just you will see new pins. Uh, new fiscal year, new look. Uh, the new Ohio branding thanks to Wendy and the Department of Development and ODAC Communications. So, you will see uh, kind of the new brand in there, um, and we'll be moving forward with that, so there'll be changes to the website. Um, and then, on a, a completely final note, uh, Jerrica, I, I think she's behind your pillar. Uh, Jerrica Logan is our, our, our newest member of the Rail Commission staff. Uh, Jerrica will be the uh, project ma our program manager for uh, the Great Cross Elimination pro Program moving forward. Uh, we are, we are, this is kind of a homecoming for us. Jericho was an intern back in the day. Probably. And so now uh, Jericho is back uh, managing one of the biggest programs in the governor's initiative. So we welcome we welcome Jericho to the commission. And that, awesome. Mr. Chairman, is in the report. Thank you, Matt. <coughs> Any questions from members of the commission? Mr. Chairman? Yes. Um, um, it sounds like the, um, the great crossing elimination program is There is no deadline. What, what we're trying to do with that, because we are leveraging, which I'm just trying to, uh, Commissioner Logan, because uh, we are trying to leverage federal funds, the next NOFO is supposed to come out between, the, between November and December. That's the latest announcement. And so what we're trying to do is, we're, we're, we're not going to have a hard stop for these, but we are going to have to have tranches of funds where we, we have a cutoff and we decide which ones we're going to attribute to federal, which ones we're going to plan on. Um, so it's going to be rolling, but there are going to be certain cutoffs for the federal fund. So, so we'll continue to accept applications, but unless something is ready to go, probably after that that no go day, we won't be able to apply for federal funding on that round. So there will, and the program is 100 million, right? Correct. And so it's not all going to be for matching federal funds. There's going to be some that will be 100 percent state funded through the program. I don't know if it's going to be 100 percent state funded. I think we expect some kind of local local match. Maybe it might be 80 or 20. Um, but some of the planning efforts might be 100 percent funded to get the project. Yeah, if, if we, I mean, typical federal programs are 80 20, we could potentially leverage a half a million dollars. That's the idea. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think we're going to be limited uh, to funding rounds. I think there's a, a federal limitation, so it's probably going to be around 400 million. But with what we're leveraging for other funding sources, we could apply for Chrissy grants. You know, these things are going to be eligible. So the idea is to develop these pipeline projects. And then it could be a raised, it doesn't have to be this funding source. It could be a Chrissy grant, it could be a raised grant, it could be some, some other funding source. 
So this um, three cross and elimination could have a broad definition. It could mean bridges. If, there, if, there's, if there's cross enclosures involved. Okay, but I mean, if we put a bridge, we're eliminating that grade. Correct. And is the one for one, if we know those things, or? It would be eligible for one for one. Again, going back to the federal competitive nature, you know, the, the, it's called the great cross elimination program. So the more, the more process we can get closed, the more competitive the applications can be. I'll do it that a little more. Um, but the orphan rail program sounds like a good one. It sounds like there's still questions. And um, I guess I would recommend the staff that they touch base with the County Engineers Association because the County Engineers probably have their ears in the ground, at least from the public side. I don't know if this is intended for the railroad operators or for the public. Uh, local public authorities or not, but um, I don't know if the working rail also includes working bridges, but any experience working bridges that may be a problem for county engineers. But, Mr. Chairman, uh, Commissioner Lozier, we made the eligibility extremely broad. Okay. So everything you mentioned would be an eligible application. We only have a million dollars to work on the bridge that we're going to be taking down. Okay. But, and last, um, you know, the, I think one of our marquee programs here is the Great Crossing Safety Program. And you mentioned here that you've got 39 diagnostic reviews. And if you look at the data, we've, we've really got a great story to tell with uh, safety improvements in that program. And I know that most of it, thanks to ODOT, is uh, federal, safety, federal highway safety funds, which is what we're using here. Um, are we? Getting to the point where we have fewer of them is 39 a big number. So, or a smaller number, <coughs> is that? Mr. Chairman, Commissioner Lodger, we're running about the same. What I can say, I, I think Mr. Bell just got in here. Um, we, Alan and I talked about this. We're running about the same number right now. What's happening though is they are taking longer and they're getting more complicated. Mm -hmm. It's not just, we're not just building lights and gates. You know, a lot of this, now the, the definition of what crossing safety is, you know, is it ADA compliant? Does it have sidewalks? Uh, you know, uh, it, it, it's, it's beyond just building the light gate to clear victory and moving on to the next one. Mm -hmm. So, so it's, it's a, they're, they're getting more complicated and the, the length, of, we have the same number, but the length of time it takes to get these done because of the scope changes is increasing. And that doesn't even count preemption, where you have the time to work with the local communities for, uh, Near uh, intersections. So, in other words, we've got we've got a low hanging fruit over the years, and now they're getting more complex and more expensive. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and if I might add, in addition to that, with new eligibilities, a lot of these warning devices, you know, they started getting put in in the seventies. They're they're obsolete. Oh. Wow. So, you know, talking to the railroads about upgrading yeah. warning devices to the newest technology and things like that as well. Um, thank you, Matt. And, uh, I don't have any more questions. Okay. Any other questions? From members of the commission, Mr. Chairman. Yes, I just have one. Just on the uh, WNLE Spencer project, is that a bridge project? I'm trying to recall from our previous meetings, or is it just rail rehab? Oh, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Commissioner Jackson, that is actually it was one of the Christie grants. It is adding track and uh, connecting track to okay. the Spencer because they have a lot of backup loops because that's where their two of their subdivisions connect. Okay. And so so it, it, it involves some property acquisition and um, it turned out to be the FRA had a little again when I talked about that NEVA differences, they had a little bit of a difference of opinion in terms of what kind so of So is it Mr. Chairman, is it um, because of the land acquisition that's called that into question? Yes. Okay, got it. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Tim, I said that correctly, right? The land the land acquisition and the the, the new track on existing land that was undisturbed is what's causing it. Uh, yeah, there, there's no, uh, sorry, Mr. Sure, uh, I'm sure, uh, Jackson. The, uh, the land is owned by the railroad right now, um, but it's um, not actively used as rail right away. So there's new ground disturbance, and uh, that's what's the cultural resources, coordination, and some ecological. I can barely hear you. Oh, it's because it's, it's not part of the railway. Right. It, it, it didn't have railways on, 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 on the beginning. So, 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 so
So they had acquired it earlier, so it's not a new acquisition, okay. but it's new to the new project. Right also, so it's new to the project. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you, Dave. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Any additional questions? Hearing none. Thank you, Matt. Appreciate it. Uh, Megan, would you please give your finance report? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My report begins on page 11 of today's meeting. I did want to report to the commission. We have a loan that was fully repaid. That was to Bluegrass Farms. It was approved by the commission back in 2018. And the company purchased a reef stacker to be able to move to intermodal containers around at their facility in Jeffersonville. So we are down to just two loans currently in repayment. We've had a couple outstanding that have been approved, but have not closed yet. The other thing that I wanted to report is to draw your attention to the 2024 meeting dates that are in the packet. We did change the September date from what we published in the last packet, so if you've already put that on your calendar, please make sure to update that one. Otherwise, Mr. Chairman, that should be more time. Thank you, Megan. Any questions from members of the commission? Hearing none, we'll move on to projects for approval. Yes. Mr. Chairman, um, due to the nature of both the first and second project, I must refuse myself. Very good. I'll get to Okay, thank you. Uh, Tom Burns, you're starting off today. I am indeed, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, if you and the members of the commission will turn to page uh, 22 of your packets, you will see the uh, JSW steel briefing uh, that was also in your uh, packets, I think, two months ago. I do want to apologize again to our JSW friends. Uh, you know, be patient with us and, and dealing with our snafu, and we're uh, really happy you guys are here. And so with that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Samir and Matthew, and they'll tell you a little about the project. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Samir Kalra, CFO of uh, JSW USA. Uh, Matt Caprice is uh, Vice President of Engineering, Health, Safety, and Environment. Uh, we just wanted to walk you through the projects we have, but uh, as a presentation, we will walk you through, and if there are any questions, we are happy to answer that. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, so we are presenting this morning uh, a couple of rail, inter, uh, interplant rail uh, expansion projects that uh, really support uh, a, a larger expansion and investment in Mingo Junction, Ohio. Um, we're part of... Uh, uh, JSW Group, uh, for those that aren't familiar, um, is a large corporate conglomerate, a $23 billion conglomerate working toward uh, 30 million tons per annum uh, in uh, crude steel production capacity, um, you know, on the steel uh, side of the business, but also uh, a diversified portfolio that includes energy, uh, infrastructure, paints, uh, and, and even sports and uh, the JSW uh, Outreach Foundation. Uh, so we're part of a large global corporate conglomerate. Um, in the United States, um, you know, just to show you the, the ge geography here, predominantly based in, in India, Europe, and uh, two uh, manufacturing sites now in the, in the United States, including Ohio. And uh, just to show you specifically where in the state, uh, Jefferson County, uh, Ohio, in the southeast uh, region. Um, this, the site in Ohio is a long, uh, Mingo Junction, Ohio, long story, actually one of the first steel making centers in the United States, uh, dating back to the Andrew Carnegie period, uh, under U.S. Steel, and then longtime owner, uh, Wheeling Pittsburgh Steel Corporation. Um, in uh, 2018, JSW Group uh, acquired the Mingo Junction facility and uh, modernized, started the modernization and, and uh, restarted steel making after 10 years of being idle uh, in, in Mingo Junction. Uh, so we now operate the most uh, uh, largest and most advanced con steel electric arc furnace uh, in North America, which, uh, which is a greener, cleaner way of making steel. Uh, transforming from the fully integrated uh, days of the Mingo Junction storied uh, history. Uh, and what we're doing now is we're continuing that modernization um, in, and uh, installing a vacuum tank degasser, which will advance our uh, uh, vacuum tank degasser and um, dynamic soft reduction on our caster. Uh, in, in conjunction with the rail projects that we're presenting, is, is going to continue to allow us to serve more advanced markets and increase our capacity at uh, Mingo Junction. 
and this is just a uh, another view of the process as I, as I mentioned the electric arc furnace route um, uh, ladle metallurgy furnace for refinement or continuous caster uh, specifically the projects that, that we're presenting um, uh, one really helps us de-bottleneck and uh, afford additional car storage from 184 to 351 cars with the shared uh, switching yard with uh, uh, Wheeling and Lake Erie Railroad of Norfolk Southern. Um, it also affords flexibility um, with not only the car increased capacity for the car storage, but also uh, run around track for, uh, to decrease the congestion and improve uh, logistics efficiency on site. Sorry for the eye chart there, but that's uh, specifically the you know the details of the switching, um, which includes crossovers, you know, retamping, rehabilitation, uh, and the runaround track I mentioned in the red there. Uh, the the other uh, related rail project is in the, um, is expanding our scrap processing, which is very important to us. Uh, with scrap being the lifeblood of our facility and the primary raw material. Uh, this is a significant expansion from eight and a half acres to over 30 acres uh, to ensure the continuous flow of uh, our primary raw material in the form of, of uh, scrap. Uh, this includes four new switches uh, that would uh, allow us the flexibility of combination of inbound uh, rail and truck and our internal logistics is completely served by rail on you know, feeding from the yard to the electric arc furnace uh, via rail. Uh, so four additional uh, switches with the development of the increased scrap yard. And just a visual pictorial of, uh, of these four switches um, and uh, you know, conceptually what this, what this will look like. And you can see the difference in the purple. Uh, that's the existing to the left versus the you know, eight and a half acres to the expanded 26 acres. Uh, so, so quite an uh, increase in the, the footprint and uh, operational flexibility for us. That's the last slide. That's the last slide. We appreciate uh, the commission's uh, hosting us this morning. Yeah, I, at this point I think we'll open up questions. Yeah, any questions for presenters? Mr. Chairman. Yes. So we produce uh, steel slabs at Mingo Junction facility using scrap and pig iron we melted into slabs. We have three outlets for those steel slabs. The biggest is they go via barge to our plate mill in Baytown, Texas. And there we roll these slabs into white plates. They are one of the widest mills in the country. And we sell these plates to uh, end customers which are in uh, right now in onshore wind energy, coal towers. Uh, for electric transmission, we also sell for barges, uh, for bridges, a uh, lot of uh, tank cars are made. So we have uh, customers who make uh, rail tank cars as well. Uh, and we also sell to service centers, uh, they're used in a lot of different uh, uh, construction uh, related activities and for fabrication. All the oil tank, uh, oil storage tank are fabricated through our plates. So a lot of different applications. We, this project uh, is part of a larger 145 million investment we are doing in Mingo Junction, which will improve our capability to produce slabs that are required, uh, more challenging grades that are required by renewable energy industry, especially offshore wind, which we have a lot of uh, uh, new facilities coming over all over the country. They will require uh, those grades of plates for monopiles, uh, structures that go uh, in the ocean. And, and this project, the whole 145 million project in which we are uh, investing in a new vacuum tank degasser and also upgrading our caster with dynamics of production. Those projects will help us produce the grades of slab that can be used by our offshore wind customers as well as several other challenging API uh, grades that are required. And then Baytown will Mer will roll those slabs into plates which we ship to our end customers. We also uh, have a toll rolling arrangement with Allegheny Technologies Inc. in 
uh, Brackenridge, Pennsylvania. So we send our slabs by rail by Norfolk Southern to uh, Brackenridge and ATI toll rolls them and then we sell those slabs to our hot roll coil customers. We have an in-house hot rolling mill as well, which we used to operate till mid-2020. But since we uh, revamped our electric arc furnace uh, in early 2021, we also entered into a toll rolling uh, agreement with ATI back in April 2021, which we announced at that time. And we, we, we use uh, ATI's mill to toll rolls uh, slabs into hot roll coils. And these hot roll coils are sold to a variety of customers, uh, including a lot of service centers, uh, tubing uh, applications, mostly for construction and, and tubing uh, OEMs, uh, which are using that. Fascinating. Uh, since you're in Ohio, I, I want us to be uh, first in line since we have biomedical requirements here. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. Very fascinating. Sure. Any other questions? I have one comment, one question. Comment, thank you for choosing Ohio. Thank you for investing in Ohio. We appreciate the manufacturing jobs. My question is, the rail uh, cars that you use, is that for commodity scrap coming in and, and uh, metal steel going out? Is that how you ship? Yes, we use uh, rail for both. So we use rail for scrap coming in. Uh, we also have truck uh, by which scrap comes in, but a but, uh, significant proportion is rail. Okay. And then we have a lot of internal transportation of rail uh, scrap going from the scrapyard to our furnace, which these okay. uh, projects will help. Uh, yep. And then we ship out slabs to ATI as well as our other third-party slab customers by rail. Okay. Uh, and to Baytown, uh, Texas, sometimes we ship by rail when we have an urgent requirement, but typically uh, barge is the most uh, cost-effective mm -hmm. way of transport. There. Okay. Great. Thank you. Any other questions? Hearing none, uh, thank you for pre your presentation. Do I have a motion to approve resolution 23-10? Yes. And, yep. and a second. Commissioner Roberts, is there any discussion? Megan, would you please take the roll? Commissioner Landy? Yes. Commissioner Lozier? Yes. Director Hartnett? Yes. Commissioner Ryan? Yes. Yes. Commissioner Ritter? Yes. Commissioner Zitter? Yes. Commissioner Jackson? Yes. Commissioner Chairman Corbett? Yes. Commissioner Jackson? Chairman Corbett? Yes. Mr. Chairman, we have nine permitted votes in the motion. Great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, guys. Moving on to the second project. Um, Tom, this is you as well, right? Yeah, you uh, might as well get comfortable might looking, as well. looking at me. Uh, up here. <laughs> I think this is a, a, I was surprised most of the time we don't have the, the podium on, but now the, the podium is on, so I don't have to feel like I'm yelling at you guys. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission, if you want to turn to page 27 of your packet, uh, you will see the briefing for the uh, one of the two Chrissy wins that we have just picked up, which is the uh, Kana, I think is the proper pronunciation of it, uh, River Railroad uh, down there in uh, South. East Ohio, and that's a joint project with No Pink Southern. Um, and so we won that one. That is about a $16 million grant. We're really excited about that. Um, you can see a little bit more details. Kind of one of the things that I think we've done in the past, and just to reiterate for anybody who's forgotten, when we go through these Christie projects, we go and we submit them to the federal government. We will bring a briefing to you at that point. Um, and then if we win, we will bring them back. Uh, and to get final approval for everything else we need to do to administer the project and that sort of stuff. Uh, most of the time, this was very slightly unique. Most of the time, we are coming back also with a funding uh, ask. This one specifically does not. Um, we had a, it was a 50-50 project between F FRA and our railroad partners, so we are pretty excited to administer that one because that's a, a something we are pretty happy to do. So, um, yeah, I don't know if there's any other questions. We are currently refining the scope with FRA and our railroad partners. Uh, you know, we have the most of it in there, but we're trying to make certain there were a little bit of concern that some of the railroad needed to be repaired and to avoid derailments and that sort of stuff. They're kind of uh, things that needed to move a little bit faster for safety reasons, and so uh, we might move a little bit of that stuff around. But all in all, this is a really exciting project that we got to present to you guys. So at that point, I will open it up to questions on this one. Any questions? I have one question. Is there a corresponding project for? or grant uh, for the West Virginia portion 
of this? No, no, Mr. Chairman, we are actually uh, administering the whole thing ourselves. So we're doing it. Yep, okay. Yeah, so that's, and that's one of the things that's been really nice. And I, that even goes back to even when I started with the Rail Commission, uh, the National Gateway Project was the first one I remember. Uh, the Rail Commission does have the ability to do projects that are outside of the state of Ohio. Uh, so when we do have a project like this that comes in that has a significant Ohio impact, uh, but we need to take care of stuff in, in some other areas, we can do that too. Great, thank you. Any other questions? Mr. Chairman, just to follow up. How you know, just in terms of linear miles on the how much of this project is from Ohio and how much is it from Yeah, Mr. Chairman, uh, Director of Commission Marks Banks, yeah, Matt, I don't know if you've looked at that recently either. It's, it, and again, we're working on this so it's, it's It's about 60 40 right now. Yeah, it's, yeah. Um, and it's one of the reasons why um, there is no financial commitment for us. Our, our contribution to it was sponsoring it. Um, this is really important and for us as a preservation project because this is one of the last through lines through Appalachian, Ohio, between Charleston, West Virginia, and Columbus. Mm -hmm. um, it's a lot of chemical traffic, so there's a lot of safety concerns there. And so that, that was one of the reasons why we agreed to sponsor it. But because of the fiscal makeup, and like I said, it's, I, I wouldn't say 60 40 on the conservative side. It yeah. might move closer to 50 50 as, as we rescope it. Uh, but, but that's one of the reasons why um, you don't see the financial commitment because yep. our contribution to it was just sponsoring and administering it. <laughs> Any additional questions? Oh, no, 40 Ohio. But most, and, and, uh, Senator, you bring up a good point. Most of the businesses are, are in West Virginia, but all the products is going to go Ohio. Ohio. Yeah. <laughs> so the production is going is in West Virginia, but they're using it here in Ohio. Yeah, so uh, we want to move up to, yeah, to yep. move up to Columbus, which is again this was a, an interesting one, and, and West Virginia does not have the administrative capacity okay. to do this. Any other questions? Thank you. Do I have a motion to approve resolution 23-13? So moved. Commissioner Zitter with a second and a second. Commissioner Lamping with a second. Any discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, Megan, would you please take the roll? Yes. Commissioner Dill? Yes. Commissioner Drinker Roberts? Yes. Commissioner Ryan? Yes. Commissioner Jackson? Yes. Commissioner Lanky? Yes. Chairman Porter? Yes. Commissioner Lanky has nine votes. Great. Thank you. Tom, back to you. Does, does somebody want to get? Uh, well, let's get to Mr. Yeah. Jackson in. Yes. Thank you. Oh, I think Alan will not be already. Okay, cool. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I have a question before this starts. To yes, sir. Director Dietrich. Yes, sir. We had discussed whether I should refuse myself. Yes, I think that would probably be best. Okay, I will ask to be recused. For this project? Yes, this one. project. Okay, got it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Trains passing. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, if you will turn to page 32. Uh, Thank you. 32 of your briefing, uh, of your packets, you'll see the briefing for the uh, uh, second phase of the Poor and Fines and Western uh, Chrissy grants that we have out there. This is the continuing saga of the formerly worst maintained railroad in the entire U.S. Uh, that has continued to be improved upon and improved upon. And uh, so we were lucky enough to win. Another Chrissy Grant for this one. Uh, really excited to get this started. It's going to be about 13 miles of rail replacement. Uh, it is primarily rail replacement. The last time we did a project uh, at this with uh, Chrissy, it was also a lot of ties. Uh, because of a lot of investment that the uh, owners have made over the years, those, those ties and conditions are in a little bit better shape so we can go through and we can concentrate solely on the rail replacement. So we've got a good chunk of that coming in that's going to be uh, focused on um, I think it was between the Napoleon and Defiance sections. Uh, so that's really exciting uh, to see that finally getting into good shape. That'll get us a, 
a good chunk, I want to say two thirds to 70, 75% done with replacing all of the oil on the line. Uh, there have been some talk about potentially looking at what the final uh, amount would be in the future, but uh, for now we've got this one in front of us and we're excited to get this one started. So again, much like the last one, uh, we have uh, bringing it, we brought it to you guys before, we will bring it back to make certain that we can get uh, everything approved. This one does have a uh, about $264,000 uh, ODC commitment in there, so there is funding involved in this one too. So at that, I will open it up for questions. Any questions for members of the commission? Yeah, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Um, Mr. Lozier. Thank you. Um, I mean, these crazy grants just looks like we're hitting on all cylinders on these things. I don't know how what our record is. Do we have a batting average for this? I, you know, Mr. Chairman, Commissioner Lozier, I would guess it's north of fifty percent, maybe. Like That's I think it's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, we, we're feeling pretty good. We've we found a, a good niche in the sense that, like, I think we've got our rail group here, and we've got fantastic staff that kind of back us up when we do this sort of stuff. So I think we found a way that we can leverage all of these things. Uh, and a lot of states, frankly, are kind of trying to catch up to where we're at. So we're going to try and keep running faster, mm -hmm. uh, stay ahead of them, so that they can't catch us and we keep winning these things. I, I know that um, you keep track of how much money we're leveraging with our. Investments last project, we didn't have a single dollar in it, so I don't know if the division works, but we should claim all that. So, <laughs> yeah. um, can we, um, with these Christie grants, is your time and staff time, is it eligible for reimbursement? Can you charge it to the project? Yeah, uh, Mr. Chairman and Commissioner Lozier, I think there is a mechanism by which we can do that. We have not taken advantage of that yet. Uh, it's certainly something we can look at. Um, I think in the past, uh, these probably did not have the level of, it, we did not believe that we were going to have this much of our time kind of taken up by this these types of projects. Uh, it's certainly something we can look at. I don't know, Matt, if you have anything to add to that. Uh, yeah. yeah, thank you, Tom. Uh, Commissioner, when we, when we look at how we participate, like we talked about the last one, we look at what we can bring to the, the project and, and to the structure of it, and sometimes our contribution is our staff time. In, in terms, of rather than giving more money to the project, we're giving more of our staff time. So we all factor that into into how we we administer this. But but eligibility is one of those elements, and and we have been talking about scalability now. You know, is our method scalable to the level of funding we have now? So that will be for the next round. That will be a conversation with our with our railroad partners if we add some kind of administrative cost to to the next grants. But again, these are competitive grants, and we're trying yeah. to make them as competitive. Yeah ourselves as competitive as possible. And I will, not to damper Tom's enthusiasm, he is very good at this, but we're only as good as the last round. <laughs> yeah, so, well, exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Uh, nice work. Thank you. Any questions? Mr. Chairman, yes. question of uh, Tom. Uh, this is worth it. Worth it. No, it's worth for Road America. Uh, are you, is there any local product? I know that you have a candle, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Mr. Chairman and uh, Commissioner Director Marge Banks, uh, they have a number of products that have been kind of growing. I think we've seen a couple of the ones actually come through the commission recently too. So um, there was a packaging group, uh, so the packaging stuff, that was something that we had actually supported too. There's also Tessendale and Curly, that does a, a bunch of kind of food type related business too. So that's also up there. Uh, I know there's a couple, maybe one or two other companies up there. I think Johnson Manville does some uh, business up there on that line. So I can't remember necessarily offhand, but they have they have a good base of like, you know, they, they started with like maybe six to eight customers and they've been expanding. Uh, and it's been really exciting to see them expand over the years because as we've done these projects, I think companies have been a lot more comfortable putting their mm -hmm. uh, businesses on there and saying, hey, this rail doesn't, frankly, doesn't look like spaghetti. Uh, I think we're actually gonna be able to get product to use of it. So we've given, we've given, we've been really excited to see it kind of grow over the years. Any additional questions? Mr. Chairman, I have one. Commissioner Jackson. Yes. Is, are, are any of the funds um, slated for any portion of this line in the state of Indiana, or is it just all Ohio? Yeah, uh, Mr. Chairman and, and Commissioner Jackson, no, this one's entirely in Ohio. So the last one that we had with them, there was a little bit that went out to Woodburn, Indiana there, because if you can see on the map, you know, they go like a couple miles into Indiana where they hit the interchange point. Um, but no, this one is all entirely in uh, Ohio. So they won't need any, Mr. Chairman, they won't need any 
funding for the Indiana portion to complete? No, we, yeah, we have, we have at, that, at this point, I believe we've taken care of everything that needs to be done in, in Indiana. Great, thank you. Sure. Any additional questions? Hearing none, do I have a motion to approve resolution 23-14? Motion. Commissioner Lozier with a motion. How about a second? March Banks with a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Megan, would you please take the roll? Director March Banks? Yes. Commissioner Richter? Yes. Commissioner Zinner? Yes. Commissioner Beal? Yes. Commissioner Gary Roberts? Yes. Commissioner Ryan? Yes. Commissioner Jackson? Yes. Commissioner Lindsay? Yes. Commissioner Lozier? Yes. Chairman Corbett? Yes. Mr. Chairman, we have nine affirmative votes. Great, thank you, Megan. Appreciate that. I'm waiting for Commissioner Zitter to return. Looks like Alan Cobell's getting them. Members of the Commission, if you will turn to page 37 of your packet, you will see the briefing for uh, Louis Dreyfus Company. That is a uh, development that we've got happening in Upper Sandusky. And at this point, I will invite Scott Miller up here to uh, tell you a little bit more about the project. Uh, thank you, Scott. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm going to capitalize on uh, Tom's winning streak here. Um, this, <laughs> this one is a big win for Ohio. Uh, this is a very significant project that's had a long gestation period. I've been working on it for three years, and it was in the process before I ever got involved in it. I've served as a legal counsel for the project. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about it. Uh, first, starting with who is Louis Dreyfus, and I had to ask that question when they hired me. Uh, I've heard of Julia Louis Dreyfus. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was on Seinfeld, and I yep. said, and I actually looked it up, and it turns out, yeah, she's like the great granddaughter of Louis Dreyfus. Yeah. But uh, Louis Dreyfus is a multi-billion dollar multinational corporation, uh, headquartered in Europe, does business in 100 countries around the world. So when we bring them to Ohio, it's a very significant development for the state. Um, when the board of directors voted to um, authorize the project to proceed to the next step, they told me I'd have a decision at 3 in the morning. And I, I said, 3 in the morning? I, I'm not going to be up. I said, well, why three in the morning? They said, well, the meeting's in Vietnam. Oh. Wow. So uh, they apparently, you know, around the world, this company operates. So uh, we have called this Project Valencia. Uh, that was its code name. Um, I asked about what's this got to do with oranges, and they mm -hmm. said it has nothing to do with oranges. Valencia is apparently a city in Spain, and somebody liked a vacation there, and that's why it was called Project Valencia. Mm -hmm. Um, it is a $540 million investment. Um, it will uh, be used to construct uh, a soybean processing plant. They call them a crush plant. Um, while it's far more complicated than I'm going to say it is, uh, essentially soybeans come in, they're crushed, the oil is, is then derived and sold to uh, food manufacturing companies uh, for, for food use. The byproduct is uh, spent soybeans. Those are sold for animal feed. So uh, the, the product's fully consumed in the plant. Um, it will employ 114 people, $9.1 million annual payroll. So if you do the math, those are pretty, pretty high wage jobs, especially high wage, wage jobs for uh, the area it's in. Um, this project was not easy. It, it, uh, we looked at a lot of sites. Uh, in a lot of places, including other countries. Um, we went through multiple sites in Ohio. The principal driver was rail. And uh, that is why um, we've been working with the Rail Commission. Um, it uh, is slated to start construction early next year. It will probably take to the second quarter of 2026 to complete. Um, um, we have had significant help from the local folks around Upper Sandusky, the economic development folks. Um, we've obviously worked with Jobs Ohio and, and uh, 
worked with the Ohio EPA for permitting purposes. Um, it's come along well. It's, it's certainly not completely ready to go, but we, it, it has been announced. Uh, it's the intent of the company to go forward with it. Um, happy to answer questions. Uh, I feel like I've been let out of a cage because we've been three, three years in total confidentiality, and uh, finally it's like, oh, I get to talk about this, and, uh, and now suddenly I better know my facts. So. Questions? Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. This is, this is very exciting. Um, mm -hmm. what, uh, rail was a key factor in the decision, as you pointed out. Yeah. What other, since we won, what other, uh, <laughs> what other states were in contention? Uh, just about all the states in the Midwest, and including in Ontario, Canada. Um, rail was the primary driver. Uh, Proximity to agricultural inputs, <coughs> i.e. soybeans, mm -hmm. uh, significant, so you can sort of think about where this might be located. Um, workforce, we'll see. Um, it's 114 jobs in a, in a, in a place that, uh, you know, we know that may be a bit of a challenge, but going forward nonetheless. Well, Sandusky is a very nice area. and It is. Because you're north of Delaware, you should be able to get people up and down 23, so you should be yeah. in shape. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, sure. Commissioner Zetter? Uh, what percentage of your product will go out by rail? Meal. Well, you have to d define the product. The, okay. the, the oil. The meal, the end the meal of will all be trucked. <coughs> okay. Oil. Soybeans come in, oil goes out. Any other questions? Uh, I have one, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Jackson. When is the project slated to, to begin? The tentative date is, it's, we're really looking around March of next year. Um, we still have uh, a lot yet to do. We're still finishing the permitting process, the land acquisition, and the like. Um, but that's, that's the goal. How long will you think the construction? Probably take? until the second quarter of 2026. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah I, I've learned a lot about uh, the ability of trains to make turns. Because I kept saying, why do we need all this land? The plant is this big. And they said, well, there's this big rail loop. And I'm like, you know, we could save some money if we just buy less land. And they're like, no, no, trains can't turn like that. Uh, so, Any other questions? I have a question. I work for Anheuser Bush, and we have dedicated growers for our barley, rice, our commodities. Will this have dedicated growers, or will you buy directly from like a third-party elevator? Mainly through a variety of third parties, because okay. it, it is a it's a significant amount of soybean. Yep, right. Uh, that will include, however, local growers. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. It, 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 certainly, we would love to buy the close closer the sure, better. Sure. Absolutely. Right? Yes. Yep. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Well, thank Appreciate you. And I, I, I do want to tell everybody, I, I mean, working with Tom and Matt and Wendy, it's not my first time working with them, but they've been terrific. Uh, as I said, this has not been the easiest project, but it certainly was easy here. So, I would like to thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Tom, you're done for the day. I'm done. Very good. <laughs> well, thank you. A lot of good projects discussed today. Uh, committees. Committees did not meet today, uh, so we'll move on to old business. Is there any old business to be considered by the commission? Hearing none, is there any new business to be discussed by the commission? Yes. Yes. Uh, we, we wanted. Uh, we just finished something we've been calling the Rail Crossing Community Improvement Index. Uh, it's a, a tool for uh, identifying. We have a lot of measures about how safe a crossing is. There's really no objective measures about how important the crossing is to a community. So we decided to try to invent one. And this is phase <laughs> two of that. And uh, the, yeah, the government does that question a lot. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the, uh, uh, Sarah Zavert's uh, been, been leading up this effort. So she wanted to give a, a brief presentation. Everything's online now, so the school's That's active. Oh, but cool. we thought that uh, having an online presentation with people online might not be the best idea, so there's some screenshots of the tool. Yeah, so uh, this this is not in the packet, I don't believe. Um, so if you can take a look at the screen here. 
Uh, like Matt said, the tool is live on the website. If you go to braille.ohio.gov, um, we have a couple of ways you can access it, and that's in these slides here. Uh, a little bit of background, what is the Rail Crossing Community Impact Index? Um, so before I started with the Rail Commission, they had uh, developed a tool called the Adaptive Capacity Study that was finished around 2020. And like Matt said, it was kind of a, uh, we have the safety, the PUCO has their safety score, but there's you know other things that go into uh, the crossing and what happens if it is blocked. You know, people can't get to the schools, Fire services, emergency services might be blocked. Um, so that original study was a way to take a few different uh, community uh, factors and kind of compile them to develop a score for all of the at-grid crossings in Ohio um, so they could be uh, compared relative to each other. Um, the, uh, what we've worked on for the past year uh, is taking that original tool and converting it into a publicly available, accessible uh, tool that everybody here, there's no login or anything, so you can, after this meeting, go check it out. Uh, so it, it is available online. Uh, the main tool we used uh, was Microsoft's Power BI dashboard uh, that let us have some uh, really good user input functionality, interactivity that we didn't have with some of the other options. Uh, next slide. Uh, so like I said, um, who can access it? Everybody. We do intend for this to be used by uh, the general public, so county engineers or other government officials, or if you're just kind of curious to know about the crossing that's in your backyard and want to you know, look at some of the stats on it. Um, uh, and here you can see the two ways we have now to access it is on the, uh, the Rail Commission website. It's on the scrolling banner that you'll see when you first log into the page. Or we have the rail maps and tools cards, so if later in the future the, the scrolling banner goes away, it will still be accessible through there. Uh, so what does it do? Um, we wanted to have a, another way to give a uh, quantitative score to all of the public at-grade crossings in Ohio. Um, so what this tool has, if you log in or if you access it and see, all of the crossings will have a score from 0 to 5, with 0 being the least impactful, 5 being the most impactful for the, I believe, just over 5,600 public at grade crossings in Ohio. Um, another uh, function of the tool is we know there's not just one type of road user, um, so, you know, driving your car or something, uh, but there's also, we have the tool has the ability to um, generate scores for uh, non-motorized road users, so pedestrians, cyclists. Uh, there's also a mode for truck that uses the uh, truck traffic that's uh, accounted for within the state. Um, so the, the idea is to kind of give as many options for as many different scenarios, different types of road users uh, as possible. And so here's just a little uh, example of uh, what the tool looks like and some of the user functionality in it. Um, the three uh, scoring modes, the motorized, non-motorized, and truck, um, you can toggle between those on the tool itself. Uh, we also have the ability to uh, change the weights of the four components that these scores uh, are derived from. So for the, the power users, the people that really want to get into kind of you know number crunching and stuff, we have three different weighting modes to play with, but if you're also just Hey, I'm just kind of starting out. I don't really know what questions to ask. We also wanted to make sure it's accessible for, for that audience as well. Uh, here you can see highlighted the uh, motorized score. If you switch on the other uh, score options, that will change as well. Uh, the four components that the score uh, uses, uh, public importance, which is, uh, takes into account uh, population, uh, road traffic, pedestrian traffic generators, uh, redundancy, how far away from that specific at grade crossing is the next grade separated crossing. So if you have to take a detour, how far out of your way are you going to have to go to, to actually get around the train? Uh, delay to road users, that incorporates uh, things like the uh, proximity of the crossing to uh, high traffic rail areas such as rail yards or sidings. 
Uh, and then the safety component, we take that from the PUCO's safety hazard score. Uh, uh, one of the other things that why we went with the Power BI option is the interactivity uh, that it provided. Um, so you can see here the map widget on the left. Uh, so if you you know you have that crossing that's behind your house, but you can't remember what road it's on. You can use the map widget to go and, and zoom in and actually get that information that way. Uh, or if you're trying to uh, do an assessment at a city or a county level, uh, we have the filters that will filter down the data and, and provide that data set for you as well. And in, in lieu of doing a live demo, just in case something went wrong, um, I have a, a quick example here. Uh, so, uh, a neighborhood has an increase in truck traffic complaints about blocked crossings. Which crossing might be the best candidate for a grade separation? So in this little example, we have uh, four crossings here that's in a community. Uh, we're looking at uh, our audience of, of complaints has come in is from truck users, so we're gonna use the truck scoring mode to get that information using the truck uh, average annual daily traffic counts. Um, we're gonna use the equal ranking mode because we're kind of looking for a bigger picture. We want all the components rated equally. Um, so setting those two, we've got our four crossings here, and we can see just looking at, at these four components, um, we can see that the, the first crossing there, based on its overall score, uh, would be the most likely candidate for where a grade separation might go. Uh, and again, this, we don't intend for this to be a definitive single source for any of the decisions. We, we want this to be a kind of enhancement tool for uh, other community kind of like anecdotal data um, to be used in the decision making process. Um, I think that's... So uh, with that, that's kind of a very crash course overview of it. Um, any questions? Any questions? It's impressive. Commissioner Lozier. Uh, do we intend to use it through the, the program that we got going, the Great Cross Innovation? Yes, I did not mention that. Um, we, we have got that on the internal side. We've started to, now that this is live, we're starting to incorporate the Ricky scores uh, with the uh, Great Elimination Program crossings for the ones that have uh, uh, multiple sites uh, proposed. I have a question. Got a lot of questions. Oh, Commissioner Dr. Roberts, and then we'll go to you yes. and then bring you. How, how dynamic is the data? How often is it is it updated? We're planning at the moment, uh, based on the other data sources that are kind of fed into it, probably on a once a year schedule. Thank you. Mr. Jackson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. What is the difference between the motorized mode and the truck mode? So the motorized uses the average annual daily traffic, so all traffic kind of combined together. Uh, with the truck mode, we um, use uh, ODOT, when they do their traffic counts, they have a subset of truck data that's either um, physically counted or estimated based on, uh, they, have a, they have a formula that they use to, to get that estimate. Um, so it's, it's mostly the same structurally, but it's kind of tailored toward that specific truck count. So it's not in the, so the trucks would be in the motorized. Their counts are in the motorized, but for the, for the trucks, it's just the truck data. Mm -hmm. okay. Dr. Banks, go ahead. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, how, I noticed the code for the different crosses, are they all? The the crossing ID? Yes. Yes. Okay. So it's six numbers followed by a letter. And did I hear you correctly? There were fifty six hundred approximately. Yeah, there's just over fifty six hundred public at grid crossings within Ohio. Okay, thank you. <laughs> that's a lot. Yeah. Any other questions? This is excellent work. Yeah, it's really good. It's really good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. This is really good. Uh, any other new business? Yeah. Oh, no. Okay. Man, I was just going to ask one thing since this is our last meeting of the year, since we just saw some great maps, maybe we should update the maps on the projects 
and we've done, I don't know the last time we've updated the, the safety projects and the economic development projects, but it might be a good idea to do that. Yeah, that's a that's a okay. Okay. Cool. We're debating whether we should do fiscal year or calendar year, but I think the calendar year one's kind of fit. Yep. Better. I agree. Totally agree. Any other new business? Hearing none, now we'll move to the public comment portion of the agenda. Uh, Mike, would you please give instructions for the members of the public that are who would, would like to comment? Yes, thank you, Chairman Corbett. We'll now have discussion of questions and comments. As a reminder, you can still submit questions through the questions box in the GoToWebinar panel, or you may click on the hand icon to raise your hand. And please state your name before providing your question or comment. And looking at the questions box, we do not see any questions at this time. Okay. Any public comment from people in the audience? Hearing none, we'll call this uh, meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone, for a great year, and we'll see you all again in January. Thank you. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.